Uh, my colleague, the minority leader last week, met with the nominee. Afterwards, he told reporters that he had, quote, serious, serious concerns about the judge. Well, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. After all, it seems the minority leader had concerns about the nominee even before the nominee was announced. Before Judge Gorsuch was announced, the minority leader made clear that any nominee must be, quote unquote, mainstream. But it became clear immediately that this nominee is widely regarded as a mainstream judge with impeccable cr credentials. Liberal law professor Lawrence Tribe says that, quote, He's a brilliant, terrific guy who would do the court's work with distinction, end of quote. Alan Dershowitz, who certainly is no conservative, says Judge Gorsuch will be, quote, hard to oppose on the merits, end of quote. Even President Obama's acting solicitor general, Neil Katyal, said, Judge Gorsuch, quote, would help to restore confidence in the rule of law, end of quote. Now the course goes on, Mr. President. Well, apparently because the nominee is so obviously mainstream, the benchmark for my colleagues' concerns keeps changing, moving the goalposts. The minority leader has conveniently developed a new test. Now he says that the benchmark is independence. Quote, the bar for the Supreme Court nominee to prove that they can be independent has never, never been higher, end of quote. Well, fortunately for the minority leader, the nominee passes that bar with flying colors, just like he passed the mainstream test with flying colors. The nominee's record makes clear that he's an independent and fair-minded judge who deeply, who's deeply committed to the separation of powers. Here's just one example from his many opinions on that point. Just last year, Judge Gorsuch uh, had to decide a case about authority of the Board of Immigration Appeal, BIA for short which answers to the Attorney General. The BIA wanted to change the Attorney General's power to waive immigration requirements for illegal immigrants. And it wanted the new rules to apply to undocumented immigrants whose waiver applications were already in the works. The nominee said no to this executive agency. To be clear, Judge Gorsuch was asked to decide whether an executive agency in charge of an immigration law could change the law on a whim in a way that many believed was unfair to immigrants who had already sought waivers. He said no. With due respect to my friend, the minority leader, there's no doubt that Judge Gorsuch would say no to this or any other part of the executive branch that oversteps its bounds. Here's what the nominee wrote about the separation of powers and the executive branch uh, and, and the executive branch overreach. For him to defer to the executive agencies in that case would be, quote, more than a little difficult to square with the constitution of the framers' design, end of quote. That's because doing so would allow agency bureaucracies to, quote, swallow huge amounts of core judicial and legislative power, end of quote, which the Constitution assigns to separate branches of government. So the nominee was concerned about the separation of powers. He was concerned about people whose liberty might be impaired. And because of those concerns, he said no to the immigration agency's policies whim of the day. Judge Michael McConnell, a former colleague of Judge Gorsuch on the 10th Circuit,
makes the same ob observation about this case. He says the scope of executive power arguably, quote, will be the most prominent Supreme Court issue of the coming decade, end of quote. He said the nominee analyzes that issue in a way that's faithful to the Constitution and to the independence of the judiciary. And he points to the nominee's thinking on this question. This is what Judge Gorsuch wrote. Quote, what would happen if the political majorities who run the legislature and executive branches could decide cases and controversies over past facts? They might be tempted to bend existing laws to reinterpret them. This would risk the possibility that unpopular groups might be singled out for this sort of mistreatment or would raise or would raise along the way to grave due process, fair notice, and equal protection problems. It was to avoid dangers like these, dangers the founders had studied and seen realized by their own time that they pursued the separation of powers. Sounds a little bit like you'd find stated in the Federalist Papers on the role of a judge and the separation of powers. What I just quoted was a nominee's words. That's the writing of an independent judge who believes in separation of powers. You know, there's a bit of irony in some of the criticisms I've heard leveled against Judge Gorsuch. On the one hand, I've heard that we have to make sure that he'll be independent and that he won't rubber stamp the president's agenda. On the other hand, I've heard he'll be way too tough on the executive branch as it fulfills the president's agenda. Well, it's quite obvious. Common sense tells you you can't. You look at those two arguments, you can't have it both ways. Judge Gorsuch has shown he is faithful to the separation of powers in the Constitution. That means he will be an independent judge who will say no when the other branches of government overreach. And you don't need to take my word for it. Listen to President Obama's acting solicitor general, Neil Cacho. He's no fan of the president's executive order, but he says that Judge Gorsuch quote, will not compromise principle in favor of the president who appointed him, end of quote. Instead, that solicitor general said the nominee, quote, would help to restore confidence in the rule of law. Judge Gorsuch's record and reputation have no room to doubt that he's leave no room to doubt that he's a mainstream independent judge. He'll apply the law fairly, and he won't be afraid to say no when the Constitution requires it. Every time my colleague, the minority leader, has set out a standard for filling this Supreme Court seat, this judge has met it. He's mainstream. He's independent. And when my colleagues chooses a new standard, I'll bet that the nominee will also meet that new standard. And the more of these faults that are pointed out, the stronger this candidate for the Supreme Court's going to come. I yield the floor.